We'd seen Safa present at a couple of different um, things that we'd been at. And we thought, okay, let's let's make a, an initial just... If we, if we wanted to adopt, what's the process? Like, we've got no idea. How does it work? Because Anne's a reservist and not a full-timer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, we actually had a conversation with the person who would later end up being our social worker. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he's been around a while in our lives. <laughs> um, so that conversation took place um, in 2018. And because we'd suffered the miscarriage and had been through the IVF, um, we were told we needed to wait for six months before we formally registered our interest. Um, for, for obvious reasons, really. It's kind of a grieving period. As soon as September came round, we were on the phone. <laughs> um, however, we did approach both a, a local a of, authority yeah, and a voluntary a agency first. near to Sandhurst. Um, and the second we mentioned we were military, they both independently signposted us to Safa yeah. because we couldn't secure how long we were going to be at Sandhurst and, and whether we'd be staying or not. Mm -hmm. um, and that was all due to, to Anne's contract at the time. Um, so we had an initial home visit um, from Safa, four mm -hmm. hours of grilling. <laughs> it's the only nice way nice, to put it. Nicely grilled. Yeah, yeah. it nicely was nicely grilled. grilled. Politely grilled. <laughs> um, no intense light. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we got the phone call um, hilariously while we were at a Kylie concert with a friend of ours um, to say, yes, you've been accepted yeah. and you can start stage one. I got the phone call. We were actually having a meal just beforehand, just before the concert with our friend, um, who, bless us, no longer with us. But it was a, so it was a really special moment. Um, I got the phone call. I sort of went, stepped to one side, yeah, took the call, out, and sort of went, <clears throat> wow, brilliant, OK. And you could obviously <laughs> tell from my face that it was a, what it was. And I come back in and I was kind of like, oh, my God, we've been accepted. And I was really excited my friend was really excited and Emma was kind of... I was of excited tentatively. <laughs> tentatively excited. <laughs> it was like, yeah, this is brilliant. But like now there's this whole... I saw it as a test, like this whole long test that could take months and months and months. And were we going to pass? And me being a pessimist, I was like, well, we're not going to pass this bit or that bit or this bit or that bit. And it's like, so I was excited, but... I, I like to say I would not let myself <laughs> believe it. Whereas me being the optimist, we kind of balanced each other out pretty well. <laughs> right from the very start, I think because he was the first person we spoke to at Safa, um, it kind of put put me at ease, definitely, um, going through. But then when we met him the first time and he came to our house and we started having like those really intense interviews of where you have to talk about your feelings and stuff, which I'm really bad at because, <laughs> you know, I've suppressed them for so long. So why am I going to talk to you about my feelings? Um, he, <laughs> he, he did put me at ease, but it did take a couple of sessions to get there, didn't it? I wasn't yeah. open, but you know, that was all down to the fact that he did talk to me in a way that I was able to, to respond back. Um, and I think the, he had a very good use of um, silence <laughs> and not that I would be, the, I'm not the sort of person that would jump in and fill a silence, um, unlike some, but <laughs> I, he, he did use that silence well for, and took time and let me reflect on things um, during that, that time. And I think that was really, um, for me, that was really really where I then started to trust him um, because he, he he didn't have another agenda. He literally just wanted me to talk um, about me and my feelings. Having the same social worker really kept us at ease mm. um, because if we did obviously gone with the, anybody else, we'd have had to change social workers. 
and keeping him just was that one less or even thing just to started the process again if we'd have gone with a local yeah. authority we'd have potentially have had to have just started from from stage one all over again um so you know that that is the one of the massive benefits of of adopting with Safa and being yeah. a military family is is that you understand uh, that you, you can't can move. guarantee moves <laughs> and so your social worker moves with you yeah We came round to our our matching panel in the June of 2020 um, and uh, got a unanimous yes mm. um, and then started introductions yep. and, uh, and brought our, our little girl home. Um, and the saddest thing for us now, being that it's February 2021, is that our social worker still hasn't been able to physically meet her. Um, He's seen her lots and lots on camera. Yeah. Um, and she often goes around the back of the laptop to try and find him and see where he is. Um, and actually last week, um, we were officially yeah, officially handed over from him um, to post, adoption, to post support. and adoption support if we, if we ever need it. Um, so he's no longer our social worker. He's just Uncle Roger. <laughs> and I think that speaks volumes about how much he means to us as a family. At the very beginning, sure. like even before we met her, um, when we got a um, matching panel, we then started video calls um, with the foster carer. <coughs> and that was for like about a week before we physically met her. And then when we met her, we'd, we'd built up a bit of <coughs> rapport um, she recognised our voices and definitely recognised our faces. And I think that helped with that attachment. Yeah, early on, I mean, it's it? something that had never been done before yeah. with this particular local authority um, or foster carer in terms of doing virtual intros leading into physical ones. And it's something when we finished that both the foster carer and the social worker said they would definitely continue to do. When we went in within five minutes, she was crawling all over Anne and trying to play with a, a water bottle and... You know, there was no tears, no nothing. Um, so that was Whereas definitely I was like, positive. Oh, I've got a child crawling <laughs> over me. Am I allowed to touch it? Am I allowed to give her my water bottle? Am I allowed to give her a hug? <clears throat> um, but no, that definite that virtual introductions definitely helped. Try not to put too much pressure on yourself understand that you are strangers you know as and actually quite a lot of people in the in the adoption community talk about it and someone spoke about it today where they said you know I didn't just take one look at my husband and instantly I was in love with them it took time to form that bond and that connection mm -hmm. and fall deeper and deeper for that individual and it's exactly the same when it comes to you and your child if you're adopting it doesn't necessarily happen straight away for some people it does you had much more of a an instant connection. <laughs> For me, um, I did. As, as soon as we went into the foster carers that day to meet her, I did, and I kind of popped my head around the corner and she was crawling on the floor and she looked up, my heart just melted. And it just kind of, I don't know, you, you can't really describe it. You, I, I can only imagine that it's exactly the same when somebody gives birth and you see that child for the first time, um, even though obviously we'd seen her on video calls and stuff. It's just seeing that tiny person who is a lot smaller than what I thought she was going to be. Um, and just kind of that moment was it. Um, and then over the next few first few days, even though she was a little bit upset here and there and we couldn't work out what was wrong because obviously she couldn't talk. Um, every time she smiled, my heart melted. Every time she did something like really cute or she stood up or she looked at me, my heart melted. And it, it was just, I don't know, for, for me, that kind of not caught me unawares, but just, you know, I, I've said that it takes me a long time to trust people and get to know people. But this tiny, innocent little life just kind of, I, I don't know, just connected really quickly. And I don't I don't know if that part of my 
a sort of not instant bond was because it, this was something I'd wanted for so long and you heap these expectations on what that's going to be like and there were absolutely there were magical moments and we were definitely forming a bond very quickly but I certainly wouldn't say that I had fallen in love for, with her like I am now like it's now it is unconditional like she can be a horror during the day <laughs> But the second she gives me a cuddle or now says, I love you, <laughs> like, that's it. I'm gone. That's all I need. She can keep me up for hours in the night. All she has to do is then get up in the morning and smile and bounce on the bed like a bunny rabbit. And I'm like, yeah, OK, you're cute. <laughs> you, yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, yeah, my advice is try not to heap that pressure on yourself. Understand where it's coming from, though. Um, and just give it time. A, a friend of ours said as well um, that when you're in those first couple of couple of days on introductions, just take a moment and stop, and sort of like a moment that you both kind of go, "Wow, this is it. This is like that moment of just us being a family for the first time." So that when she's being a nightmare <laughs> or you're struggling, you go back to that moment and you remember yeah. that moment. And we, we have done that and we actually recognised the moment at the same time, which is quite weird, wasn't it? We, we kind of, I, I held her in my arms and I was um, I was giving her a bottle before she was going for a, a morning nap. And um, I kind of looked up and I don't know whether I had welled you up. You were or crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind welling up, you were crying. I kind of, I just had her in my arms and I just looked up and looked at Emma and she went, yeah, this is the moment. And I, then I took a black and white photo to mark the moment. So <laughs> we, we have the moment captured forever. 